from the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Outdoor Oklahoma. Hi, and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Ben Davis, and spring is coming up, so fishing is about to get hot. Uh, to celebrate that, I've got with me Damon Springer, our aquatic resource, uh, aquatic education coordinator, excuse me, here at the department, and he's going to teach me all about tying lures onto fishing lines. But first, uh, Damon, we're going to explore sand bass fishing today. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about sand bass. Well, one of the main things is sand bass are known as white bass. Is what the real name is, and they are our state fish here in Oklahoma. And uh, one of the things that's unique about them, they are native. Uh, they were originally found in our river systems, our streams. Then as the years have gone, they've moved in more in our reservoirs and lakes as well. Mm. And so now you can find them pretty much throughout the whole state. And uh, another Great. thing that's really unique about them is this time of year, you know, starting in the April, May time, they'll actually go on what they call a spawning run. And they go out of those rivers, I mean those lakes, and move up into the rivers and creeks for their uh, breeding season. And one thing that's neat, you can get into those creeks and rivers and catch a lot of them when they do that. Uh, it usually starts in the southern part of the state when the temperatures are warmer there and then progressively move to the northern part of the state as the temperatures then warm up, you know, toward the north. Awesome. So it's very unique. Awesome. And they're good to eat? They are very good to eat. Uh, they have a very white meat. There's a little bit of a red line on the outside, just like a striper or a hybrid. Mm. And uh, so you want to take that off of there. But man, once you get that, they're, they're great. Awesome. Awesome. We'll chat more later. Uh, right now, we're going to check in on a uh, sand bass fishing trip at Port Gibson. Good morning. My name's Michael Thompson. This is my story. to have Cody Metzger with me this morning. We're going to go out and do some summertime white bass fishing on Fort Gibson Lake. Boy, it's one of the, uh, typically known as one of the hottest bass, white bass lakes in the state. And I'm going to share with you some of the things that I do. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just like most people. When I was a little child, I used to love to go fishing. Lived on a farm, uh, basically down at Texana, Oklahoma. We didn't get a chance to go to the lake much, but boy, we got a lot of fishing done in the pond every chance we got. And, uh, you know, that was really my love of fishing. That's how I learned the basic skills of casting and retrieving. And the more you do, the more you learn. And uh, there's great learning opportunity in every time you go out on the lake. I've got Cody Betzger with me today, and we're going to go out and catch some summertime white bass. Going to have a great time. Hang on with us and get your life jacket. Here we go. our first spot. I call this Pelican Island. Now if there's a, uh, a true name for it, I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but the pelicans stay on this island when, they're, when the water goes down below normal. It has a hazard buoy out here and I've seen two boats in the last couple of days actually beach themselves or tear the prop off on that submerged island. It's really important, boy, if you see a buoy out in the middle of the water, uh, you want to stay well clear of it. I mean, I, over a hundred yards away because that buoy is there for a reason. It's, it's to let you know that it can be a, a, a dangerous place to be running your boat. We usually start a trip out at seven o'clock in the morning. No reason to get up any earlier than that. And we're marking the shad right here right now and uh, looking for that school of white bass. And when we find them, I'll throw a marker buoy over so we've got a visual reference where the fish are at. And they, you know, once they get in these summer patterns, they'll be here for several days. And typically, uh, you, can get, you can go back to them every day until the, the bait fish move off or the water gets so hot, the fish have got to head deeper. Okay, now we're gonna use a jigging spoon this morning because I found that this is really uh, the best lure. The old Dalmatian today is, is gonna work for us and 
We're going to make uh, some little casts. We're going to fish here at 10, 11 foot of water right now. And you, just, you really don't have to cast far. You don't have to be an expert caster. You know, we're just going to throw it out there and let it sink to the bottom. That is critical. I mean, I, I, those fish are on the bottom, so you've got to let it get down there to them. And then pop it up, let it fall back to the bottom, and pop it up. And I want you to do that three times, okay? Okay. And then on that third time, I want you to just start reeling fast, okay? Okay. Because what it does is it triggers a fish to come up and bite it, all right? There's yours. Yeah. A little slower. Okay. In between the... In between the... Raising it up and let it fall down. You know, you... Sometimes you can just fish when they're really aggressive. You can you can fish it fast. Otherwise, you just have to slow down, keep that bait right in front of the fish's mouth as much as you can. Oh, got one right there. Hey, all right. There's the first one. Oh, where's the fish? Boy, they, they bite they'll, too. They'll eat it. <laughs> yeah, betcha. Going under the boat. Yeah. All right. Let's see what size he is. Hey, that's a nice one too. Pull him right over here. That is a beautiful fish. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, all right. We got on him right away, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take long. Again, in the right place at the right time. Works out great. We'll have a bucket full of these in no time. Matter of fact, this is a great time to talk about how to prepare uh, the fish that we're gonna we're gonna catch today. I mean, obviously, if you want to keep some fish, you need to make sure that that you uh, you take care of them because you know fish will fish will uh, spoil pretty fast and they're going to die pretty fast even in uh, particularly in these conditions where the water's hot and the air's hot and everything else so I always put my fish right on ice okay I've got I carry ice and put it here in the bucket and get them right on ice and that is going to preserve them make them last a lot longer go ahead and cast out and catch you another one all right so they've had some success in getting some sand bass and now Damon's gonna teach me how to tie some fishing knots. I'm super excited about this, Damon. Uh, great potential for error and success here. Good. Now tell me, now, these are not super sharp hooks. No, actually what we do, these are actually used in our aquatic education program all the time when we uh, teach anyone that comes to the programs. Mostly it's youth that come in there, the school systems or rec centers. And sure. you'll notice we've taken the barb and the, the little point right Smart. off the end here. Smart people. So that you can practice safely without hurting yourself while you're tying the line. And then this is a braided nylon string. And, and this is not uh, what you go fishing with. No, this no. is not what you fish with, but you can see it's easy to work with. And little hands can work with this really good. Or big ones. And, or big hands in your case, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so we use this just like this. Um, we, you know, explain to the kids that one line, one of these ends of the line goes back to a rod and reel, so you can't use that. Mm. And you can only use one end of the line. It's called the tag end. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to tie a Palomar knot. Palomar. Uh, yeah, and the name isn't that important as long as you know the <laughs> knot, okay? But the Palomar is the name of this one. First thing you're going to want to do is kind of double your line over and make a, a kind of a loop at the end of of the line here. Okay. Okay. Then you kind of squeeze that together where you can put that little end of the loop through the eye of the hook. Okay. Which is right here at the end. Okay. Always work with plenty of line when you're doing this. Don't okay. ever just get just a small amount. The line is, you've got a lot of it, so use it. Okay, once you've done that, then you're going to do an overhand knot, okay? Just like you're tying your shoe. Okay. You come here. I can do that. You go over your line and through and then you'll see after that that you've created a, a, a big loop here and your original loop is sticking out to the side okay mm -hmm. once you've got to this point are you there yeah all right we're gonna take the hook and we're gonna put it through the loop that we originally started with okay and then just hold the hook in the one hand and the two lines that you originally started with here in the other and just start pulling it down tight one thing that's kind of tough on these, the line when you're practicing like this, is they don't always slide the best, right. okay? But that doesn't mean you tied the line, the knot wrong. And you'll notice when you're done that on a Palomar, you should have three lines going across the one side. You flip it over, you'll have two lines with a line across the top on that side. You know you've tied it right then, ah. okay? One thing to know about when you tie a line and to help it slide too, is monofilament line is made of nylon and mm -hmm. nylon will melt when it heat hits it 
So uh, while you're tying this knot, you're creating friction, which is heat. Mm -hmm. So you should always wet your line before you tie it, you know, pull it up tight. That cools the line as it's being pulled down tight, so it won't let it weaken as easy. Mm. Lick your line, huh? Looks like you did pretty good. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I wouldn't lick these two. Okay. Much. Well, <laughs> great. Um, well, in a little bit, we're going to come back, and uh, you can tell me more about all of these lures we got in front great. of us. Yep. Uh, but first, let's check in and see what's going on around the state in the Outdoor News Report. several lures that you can use during this time of the year. A lot of people like inline spinners and a lot of people like rattle traps and they catch fish but I just find that oh. that, that spoon catches bigger fish day in and day out. Oh, there right he there. is, there he is, yeah. That one got it on the, the real end. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that can happen too so Whoa. you know there's several ways of catching them with that spoon. All right, second fish there. Is there a size limit on keeping them here? No, there isn't a size limit. Now, I, uh, there's not a size limit or uh, a number limit on this lake. If you have a lake that has hybrids or stripers, the, uh, the fisheries division put a, a number limit on your fish because people can't, cont can't uh, differentiate between a striper, a small striper or a, a small hybrid. So, you know, they're trying to protect that resource. And uh, I think they allow you 20 fish per day per person under those circumstances. And reality is that's a lot of fish. But I, I generally clean 40, 50 fish a day on a guide trip. And uh, this is, again, another nice, nice size summer white bass. And that will make, uh, make some good fillets. Right, you got another one right here. <laughs> Big guy. Yeah, another time. Now, <clears throat> I always take the fish off for my clients, and I'll tell you why I do it. Because, you know, these fish, they, they get what I call hot, and they'll flip around a lot. You see these, you see these uh, dorsal fins right here? I mean, they stick out. You put your hand right in there, and you're gonna get, you're gonna get stuck. And they will, uh, it, <laughs> it'll sometimes run your day. And I can still see the fish on the sonar, so it's, you know, it, uh, they're gonna get activated here not too long. And, Right there. <laughs> Reeling it in, huh? Yep. Yeah, got him excited. Yep. Thank God, Lee, there's a free meal. Well, these do fight good. Yeah, they're, they're a great fighting fish. Stretching your line makes that a lot of fun, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, you look for those little twitches in the line. Yes. There right he is. There. Oh, oh, that's, that's a, a little that's bigger, a bigger one, there. one. Yeah, look at that. Come on. <laughs> that is a bigger fish. You know, most of these you're going to catch are going to be a pound, a pound and three quarter. And occasionally you catch a two pounder. In the summer, these fish are long and lean. Sometimes it look like you've been on slim fast. <laughs> and uh, that's but, you one. know, again, that's that's a pound and a half fish, and and those are really nice uh, white bass for for the summer. Good job, son. Got it. Did it right when it came to the top. That was fun to watch, wasn't it? Yeah. That's a nice fish. Yes, it is. I'm going to have to take it. That's one that will be going in the pot. Ooh, chubby. Yeah, Good, healthy fish. Four to five years old. On his last, making his last stop. Pretty good one. It's taking drag, isn't he? Mm -hmm. good Not bad. That's right. Not bad at all. You take a buck of them every day. Mm -hmm. You know somebody's had some fun if they got a got a live well full of them. Yes, yep, there's still fish down there. 
got a little deeper. That one was just dropping it. Yeah. I didn't even work it at all. Yeah, he was That's looking That's a good for, fish. He was looking for it. Oh. That's a better fish. There we go, look at that. Maybe he's not. He's fighting like one. He's still pretty good size. Well, he's fighting because he didn't want to get caught. <laughs> Let's tighten up your drag a little bit there. Gonna ease us back right up there. <laughs> right there where you thought he'd be. Whoa, jumper. <laughs> he's trying to be, be like a flying fish, wasn't he? Yep. show the people how to clean the fish and get prepared for cooking and day table fare. So I'll start right behind the gill plate. You see how I'm laying my knife there and underneath the, the belly fin and simply run your knife till you hit that, that backbone and turn your, your blade down so you can go straight down the backbone. Now you can see if you have well pretty easy to understand that if you had not have cleaned or uh, cold, frozen this fish, you'd have blood all the way up and down the backbone. But since the fish was really cold, it's caused that blood to go to their internal organs. Any, any type of animal that you clean, the more blood you get out of the system, the better it's gonna taste. Pretty simple, it's really simple. And then we're going to fillet. You see how much of the blood vessel I left there on the, on the skin? That's, that's all you want to have is that center line right there. And that is the blood vessel, but it virtually has no blood left in it. So again, you remove that tainted flavor of blood from your fish fillet, and that in itself is going to make it taste a whole lot better. All right, we we filleted the uh, the sides off of the backbone and uh, kept them in a nice fresh batch of water. We're simply going to take the rib cage off of it with a, a little carry knife and discard it. Make sure you put your fish back in that fresh running water. All you have to do now is simply bread it with uh, a good seasoning, put it in the grease, and have a great meal. Well, appreciate you guys being with me. Thanks for taking us out. You bet. I had a great time. Yeah, yeah. I hope you have. I'm Michael Thompson. This has been my story. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. I say I got the biggest one. All right, hard to beat this. Well, it looks like those guys had a great time out sand bass fishing. It makes me excited to go try it myself. Oh, yeah. Now, Damon, you've assembled some lures here for me that I could take out with me to, to go sand right. bass fishing. I just uh, got a, a small variety here. I didn't want to overwhelm you with a lot of different lures. But these soft plastics, like this little uh, two-inch white curl tail, mm -hmm. also comes in a, a one-inch curl tail. Different sizes. And so many different varieties of colors. Uh, personally, I like the white or the uh, chartreuse colors Ooh. here. Chartreuse. And again, all different sizes, and they even come in. This is a tube jig. It's hollow in the center, right. and uh, but it all looks like a bait fish out there to them. Cool. The other ones that I like to use are the spinners, and the reason I like the spinners is just because of the little spinning blades here. All they flash, and they really attract a. Uh, a predator to them okay so that you want them to see that flash and want to go and eat it they like that right? wing that one and then there's the end lines too these just in line with the hook and everything and they also will spin and flash those are all great the one of the other ones is a crankbait a hard plastic crankbait and they come in a deep diving or shallow uh, diving and you can find those right there on the shelves, and uh, chrome and blue is my favorite on those. Awesome, well thanks for your expert advice today, Damon. Hopefully we can go fishing sometime soon, and I hope you can great. go fishing sometime soon too. And we'll catch you next time, somewhere new on Outdoor Oklahoma.